Photoshop Beta 26.8 just added support for exporting images as AVIF, which offers significant benefits over JPEG, including 50% smaller files, higher quality with encoding up to 12 bits and less distracting artifacts, transparency, native support for HDR, and it's already supported in all modern browsers, so it'll soon be a great alternative to JPEG. To use AVIF in Photoshop, you need to be working with the beta at this time, and then just simply go to File, Save a Copy, and change your format over to AVIF. You should see this if you are working with an 8 or 16-bit image. If you have 32-bit, as in an HDR image, there is no support yet, but hopefully we'll see that soon because it does exist in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. So we'll choose AVIF, and then you always want to embed your color profile. Click Save, and then you'll see the options for AVIF that are specific in Photoshop. And I really like what Adobe's done here. It's given us full control over many aspects of the AVIF encoding. If we just take a moment and switch to Lightroom, and you'll notice when you go to Export that we can choose the AVIF file format, which is great, but the only real control we have over is just this one quality slider. Other than that, it's your color space and whether or not it's HDR. So it's pretty limited in what you can do. Whereas in Photoshop, you can take full control of the process. You can choose, of course, your quality, which is gonna be similar here with this slider, but you can also choose lossless so that it's actually identical to your original. It's gonna make the image, of course, much bigger, but it's like TIFF where you're not losing anything to image compression. So it might be great for archiving your image. Generally speaking, when you're sharing images to the web though, you wanna choose lossy and probably something in the range of like 50 or 55 up to say like 90. So let's just choose something around 75 for this export. Then under color fidelity here, we have a couple of interesting options. The format here is showing us low, medium, high for 420, 422, and 444. You might've heard these terms. If you do video, you know what these are. This is the color fidelity down to the pixel level. Basically what this means is if you choose 444, then you get the full resolution of your color information. But if you choose 422, you have a little bit less precision. You kind of have half that quality at the pixel level or log is even lower at 420. Normally we don't see a lot of very specific color and you can lose the resolution of color without compromising what you see in the image. So it's actually very safe to subsample the image, especially like 422. You usually won't notice the difference and this will let you get a smaller image without producing something that looks any different. So it's a, just a great way to further compress your image. And generally speaking, I would probably choose 422. If you really need it, if you have an image with really fine color detail you wanna keep, then choose 444 so you don't lose it. But we'll go with the 422. Then for the bit depth, you can choose 10 bit or 12. What's nice about this is the lowest quality AVIF has higher bit depth than a JPEG, which is only 8 bit. So right off the bat, you're gonna help avoid banding and there's some tolerance for editing the image. This is a great choice for just exporting to the web. If you think the image might get edited later, you could choose 12 bit. That would give you a little bit more freedom to do that. Generally speaking, this is probably a bit more relevant for an HDR edit, but if you really want that extra quality, if you think it might get altered, then sure, choose 12 bit, give it a little bit extra quality. Most people should probably stick with 10. Under metadata, you can choose to exclude items for your privacy or to make the image smaller. So for example, maybe we just want to keep the EXIF for some camera information that we want to share, but otherwise remove the other stuff to help shrink the file and just remove stuff we don't want to share on the internet. And then under speed, this is something we see with PNG, but not most file formats. And what you're getting here is the ability to choose between saving the image more quickly versus trying to get a smaller file. So if you give Photoshop more time, it will try and produce a slightly smaller AVIF. You're not gonna save like a ton of space doing this and it will slow down quite a bit. So I would generally avoid the slowest and slow options because they are pretty slow. Like it could be 20 or 30 seconds of work here versus these faster options could be like one second and, and really rip through your images. So I would stick with like medium, fast, or maybe even fastest and maybe avoid the first two. I don't know if they're worth the extra time. So let's go with fast. We'll say okay and then jump over to finder where we can see here is the output we just created with this image is 274K, nice compact file we'd be able to share. This image was something like 2000 pixels wide. So just to give you a reference for, that's a nice compact size. That's great, but let's take a look at some actual comparisons of AVIF versus JPEG to get us a real sense of the quality. 
So I just showed you how to export AVIF in Photoshop, but if you have my WebSharp Pro plugin for Photoshop, it now also has support for AVIF when you're running with the Photoshop beta. Just go to the SDR file format and choose AVIF. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You can just choose the quality from good through ultimate, and it'll take care of all those small details for you. I've already gone ahead and used WebSharp Pro to export images in both JPEG and AVIF file format, so we can compare the overall level of quality we get from these. In my image here is the bottom layer is my original TIFF, and then above it are the various exports out of WebSharp Pro. And you can see the size of the file right here in brackets, and this error is just kind of my own internal calculations on the degree of error compared to source. So the higher the error number, the lower the quality of this image. So it's just something I do to help optimize things. And you can generally see that the AVIF scores a bit better than the JPEG as I look for ways to create sizes where the ultimate is really gonna be kind of visually lossless, even if you zoom in pretty closely. High is gonna be great when you don't zoom in and good is gonna be the point where you're on the verge of maybe seeing something uh, without having to zoom in, but they're generally speaking all gonna be great versions of an image. That's kind of my overall philosophy. So let's zoom into the detail here. Let's go quite a bit in here. Let's go all the way to like 800%. We'll be able to really see some differences here. So if we look in the ultimate quality, this is something that, I, like I said, should be, relatively speaking, you wouldn't notice. And you just look at the JPEG here, even at 800%, you're not seeing a difference. So that's kind of the way I encode the JPEG at very high quality. The AVIF, same thing, no difference here. But notice the file size here, right? So in the brackets, you get the file size. The JPEG needed 1.6 megs and the AVIF was half a meg. So it's less than half the size of the JPEG and these look identical. I mean, I can't see any difference here in these images. So you've got a great result in a much smaller file. And that's really the key benefit of AVIF here is you're just getting tremendously smaller images so that your web page can load faster, so your website can rank higher in search. So when you share images over your phone, you use less data, it's just better to have smaller images. Jumping up to the next category here where we're using the high quality setting from WebSharp Pro, Here's a JPEG, little bit of differences that's starting to show up here. And where I notice it the most is gonna be around these trees. See this artifact here? That's typical JPEG artifact, it looks kind of nasty. If you were zoomed out at 100%, you're probably not gonna notice this, but we're starting to see some visible loss of quality. But of course the file got a lot smaller, we're down to 455K. Looking at a similar quality of AVIF, you notice that it doesn't have any of that sky artifact. And I think that's one of the big benefits of AVIF is even at similar kind of overall levels of quality, you just have a more pleasing result. I find AVIF often looks higher quality. You don't have those nasty artifacts. And notice that this image is actually quite a bit smaller. It's 257K versus 455. So it actually got 43% smaller than a comparable JPEG and arguably it's even better. But if we look at the details here, there is going to be a little bit of loss of fidelity with the AVIF. Like if we move around a bit, I don't even know if we notice at this level. It's pretty subtle, but arguably there's a little bit more detail in the JPEG. I would still say that the AVIF looks better even at the smaller size, but one of the things you'll start to see is in the AVIF, the fine textures and details may start to go in. I think we'll notice it at the next level. So we jumped out of the lowest level of quality out of WebSharp Pro, the good level. Our JPEG is now down to 257, and you can see that it's artifacted pretty heavily here. Again, we're still at 800%. If we jump back to 100%, I cannot see that. So, I mean, these are still very acceptable levels of quality for most uses if you're not gonna pinch and zoom into the image, but we definitely have some artifact here. Whereas the AVIF is not gonna be susceptible to that artifact, it's just gone. And I think generally speaking, a better image and in this case, 41% smaller. But I mentioned you know, the detail. Look in the trees here. The JPEG has what looks like a little bit more detail. It's maybe arguably noise, whereas the AVIF is kind of you know, losing some of that. So you know, it's not something you can directly compare, but overall, I would say the trend with these is that as JPEG starts to fail, you're gonna notice things like these artifacts are on edges that can look pretty nasty in anything that doesn't have detail. Whereas AVIF, when you push the compression too far, it starts to lose detail and you'll, you'll have like texture that kind of goes away 
or noise in a high ISO image may not be as visible. And that's kind of the way it fails. In the end, I think you can push AVIF much further and you get a great result here. Even at 100%, this is going to look you know, indistinguishable from the original, but we've got this image down to 150K and could arguably go even further. This is just kind of the lowest levels I generally recommend in terms of quality. And let's switch to a second example where we've got a cityscape image and same thing in terms of the comparison. So let's go zoom this in to like 800%. Again, we're really pushing the levels of quality here and just maybe look at some of like the fine details of this Ferris wheel versus the buildings. And as we compare here at the JPEG at ultimate, no change, the AVIF ultimate 66% smaller. There is a little faint loss of quality here, but you would just never notice that. I mean, even at 800%, that's not very visible. So obviously much smaller file using AVIF down to the high levels here. JPEG is clearly starting to show some artifact here. It looks like noise on the face of the building, but otherwise looks pretty good. It does have artifact in the sky here. I don't think that's too great. Just kind of your typical JPEG artifact that I don't think any of us really like if you really peek into the details. Then if we look at the high version here, the comparable AVIF, we're reducing by 46%. And look at that, that artifact in the sky is gone. But on the face of the building here, it is losing some detail. I mean, the these faint vertical lines in the building, they are visible in the JPEG. But when we get to the AVIF, it is eliminating some of that fine detail. So again, the trend here is toward JPEG having some pretty objectionable artifacts and skies or things like that. Whereas AVIF can start to lose bits of small texture. But again, you really have to zoom into the detail here to see it. You would not notice this on a web page. And then jumping to the lowest levels here, down to good for the JPEG. Now we have what looks like a lot of noise, quite a bit of artifact in the sky. Certainly acceptable if we zoom back to you know 100%, you're not going to see it here. But it is at a level where if you zoom in, you're going to see that level of problem. And you know, notice what happens here with JPEG. It's like the whole block is bad. You have these eight by eight blocks. So they've got a clean sky and then all of a sudden you get all this noise here. So JPEG just does some weird things. Whereas if we look at the AVIF, it's so much cleaner. It just looks so much nicer. Yes, we've lost some of those little fine details in the building, but you hardly notice them to begin with. So I think when AVIF fails, it just fails in a much nicer way that looks so much cleaner. And then lastly, just to kind of compare things, I exported a bulk of 80 images here as both JPEG using the ultimate settings in WebShop Pro and AVIF with the new ultimate settings here. And let's just compare what we have. The JPEG required 100 megs, whereas the AVIF was down to 31. So you're arguably going to see up to a 70% reduction in the overall size of your images using AVIF, depending on how you approach it. I push things pretty far because I find that the artifacts with AVIF are more acceptable. But if you want to be more conservative, maybe you're only going to save like 50% when you move from JPEG to AVIF. But no matter what, overall, you're going to have a much faster loading website and a lot of other benefits by switching from JPEG to AVIF. Now, are we ready to do that? I think that depends on who you are. For the answer to that, I have details on my website. Let's briefly take a look at caniuse.com. This is a great website for understanding which technologies are available on various browsers. And we can take a look at AVIF versus some other options. JPEG XL is another next-gen format competing to replace JPEG and Heath, which many of you would know from the iPhone. So for AVIF, what you see here is which browser support it in green or in yellow, and then anything in red does not. And the trend you see here is all modern browsers support AVIF. The only place you don't have it are going to be things like Chinese web browser, Internet Explorer, which has been replaced by Edge, super old versions of Firefox and Safari, basically just people using very old devices. Overall, the support is showing at 94% here. Most people are going to have support for AVIF, and it's steadily moving towards 100% as these old browsers get updated. So we're moving to a great place for AVIF, but is it ready for you today or not? Kind of depends on your needs. On the website article I'll link below, I've got a script where you can actually export AVIF and JPEG to automatically serve the best version to your audience. So you can get that support up to 100% and get the benefit for your AVIF audience on that 94% of viewers get a nice, fast website without losing anyone in terms of compatibility if they don't have the latest browser. 
What about if they're using JPEG XL? This is a format that I love. I, I like this even more than AVIF, but here's the problem. It's just not supported. Apple has done a great job of supporting in Safari, but nobody else. There was a developer preview in Chrome some time ago. It got removed. So unless Google changes course, we're just not going to be able to use JPEG XL or what's known as JPEG on the web. But it has all the benefits of AVIF and additionally can support 32-bit images and basically unlimited resolution. So I think it's a great format for sending to someone to print or for subsequent editing. So as photographers, it'd be nice to use one image for everything. But when it comes to just sharing images on the web, JXL and AVIF, they're both really nice formats. Just the benefits here would extend even beyond the web. And then of course, Heath, which many of you know from Apple, is also interesting, but it's again, only supported by Apple. And the lack of support on these other browsers is just makes it unusable on the web. And we're probably not going to see it due to royalty considerations for the Heath format that just simply do not apply to JXL and AVIF, which are royalty-free formats. To learn more, head over to my website linked below and now click to this next video to learn more about the AVIF image format.